Eat some more. Have some. I had already. Okay. <laughs> Finish it up. No, no, no. Finish it up. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh my gosh, is it a lazy morning? I don't even hear it. Yes. Where is everybody? Um, Hello, right Javi. Obviously. You're right there. Okay, but you're not responding. Hi. Ava Grace is already already eating solid food. Okay. Okay, okay. So tomorrow, I mean tomorrow, yesterday was very nice, right? We went to Mass in the afternoon and when the uh, installation of the um, scapulars uh, was done after Mass, so many people lined up, right? So many people lined up to... <clears throat> be invested in the uh, confraternity of the uh, <clears throat> of the uh, scapular. The scapular. <clears throat> God bless you. Even Ava, even Ava was already enrolled. <clears throat> okay, so today the gospel comes from Saint Matthew chapter eleven, verses twenty-five to twenty-seven. And um, so we'll read a very short, this is a very short one paragraph gospel. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal Him. Our Lord uses here a very <clears throat> human image, something that's very familiar to all of us. Right? And what is that? It's the familiarity <clears throat> between a father and a son the familiarity between and you can use any any uh, comparison here familiarity between a daughter and a mother in other words a familiarity between parents and their children that really nobody knows the children more than their parents and nobody knows the parents more than their own children right and um, our Lord uses that image in order to uh, tell us and teach us a very, very important uh, aspect of our faith. And what is that? That Jesus Christ came to earth, became man, in order to save mankind. But at the same time, in doing so, he also revealed to us many other truths about God himself, right? the previously unknown God. He gave, gave uh, a face to God. He, he made God closer to us by himself taking on human flesh and becoming one like us except for sin. How much closer, how much more familiar can you get right, than getting to know somebody who is like you? Right? And here our Lord says that He and the Father are one. Jesus and the Father are one. And in many, in many ways you can you can use that same analogy for children. Right? Like when, when kids are growing up, they normally hear all the time, Oh, you're just very much like your dad, very much like your mom. Right? The other day, a friend of grandpa's commented exactly the same thing just the other day. <clears throat> you, you look exactly like your dad. <laughs> you you talk exactly like your dad, referring to me and grandpa, right? Because, well, that's what normally happens. We, we tend to uh, project uh, things of our own parents and the personalities of our own parents and the characteristics of our own parents. And nobody else can communicate that aspect of our parental uh, characteristics than the children. And so that's what our Lord is trying to tell us here in using that image of son and, and father. Right? That he came, 
in order to make known to us the Godhead. See what God really is. To the extent that we can understand, of course, because we cannot comprehend everything about God. right? But uh, because of the limitation of our own intellect, God is uh, supreme intellect. right? Uh, and, and we only share a very, very small part of that capacity to know. Right? So, uh, Jesus came to earth in order to uh, show us the Father. Right? He told Philip, right? Philip, who, who, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Right? When Philip was asking him, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be content with that. And our Lord said, well, whoever has seen me, Philip, has seen the Father. Because that is exactly what I came to reveal to you. <clears throat> okay, but then... Let's go back to the first part of this gospel. Our Lord says, For although you have hidden these things from the wise and learned. What are these things? What does he mean by these things? Okay. It's precisely precisely everything that he came to reveal about God the Father, about, <clears throat> about our faith. All of those things right, that he came on earth to reveal to us are actually, he says here, are actually hidden from the wise and learned. That is why the wise and the learned of his time couldn't quite understand who Jesus was, right? They were all questioning, isn't this the son of the carpenter? Don't we know this guy? Is it, wasn't he one of us, you know, just among us in our community, our neighbor? And all of a sudden, here he is, claiming that he's the son of God, claiming that he is the Messiah? I mean, uh, it was so difficult for them to see through, right? So difficult for them to see through the persona of Jesus Christ and and uh, and dissociate his his human activity from the fact that he is uh, God and and to understand what he was trying to reveal about himself that he was the Messiah, right? <clears throat> it was so difficult for them to understand that. In contrast, those who may not be as wise and as learned like the scribes and the Pharisees who have studied the whole scripture and they have a very different idea of what God was going to be, what the Messiah was going to be. They thought it was going to be a royal king, you know, riding in a chariot to uh, free them from the clutches of, uh, you know, their oppressors at that time, the Romans. They thought that was the kind of king they were going to receive, but no, God came as a simple child, and they could, and then he became a carpenter and lived among them, and they could not uh, understand why this is happening and who who this Jesus can be claiming to be, right? But who understood him? What was the kind of person? Who were the kinds of persons who understood him, and who? took him for who he was. Who were they? The humble people. The humble people, Joe. Very good, right? The humble people. People who seemingly didn't even go to school. Didn't even have as much learning as the scribes and Pharisees did. Who were they? Fishermen. The fishermen. The apostles, right? The first apostles. The fishermen. The simple folk, right? Who were precisely simple, humble, not cocky, not pretending they know everything, right? Not thinking to themselves, oh, you know, I'm educated. I should be able to understand you. I should be able to uh, discern who you really are, whether you're a hoax or you're the truth or whatever it is, right? Uh, they were not the suspicious type, right? Who doubted everything and who subjected everything to... To, uh, to suspicion and, uh, and to uh, examine things under a microscope until they really believe. That is why it was so difficult for those people to believe. Not so much because they couldn't understand Jesus, but because, but because they were proud. See, they were proud. They were full of themselves. They were so full of their own perfection, so to speak, of their own learning that they forgot how to be simple. They forgot how to be 
childlike. Right? That's why our Lord says here, uh, you have revealed them to the childlike. So our Lord uses the image of a child, like Ava, <laughs> right? Full of innocence and is just, you know, look at what she's doing now. Just trying to explore everything around her, right? And trying to get to know everything around her. Tasting everything. Everything has to go to her mouth, right? Well, how does this taste? Right? The innocence of a child. The purity of a child's heart. The purity of a child's mind. The purity of a child's intentions. Is what Jesus wants us to acquire in order to prepare us in order to make us ready in order to make us disposed God bless you to understand the things that he has come to reveal okay so that's very important for us to understand if we if our disposition especially towards the things of God is one of cockiness is one of pride is one of complicated uh, analysis of things <laughs> we will never understand who God is and what God wants from us at every moment of our lives so this is not only applicable this kind of simplicity of heart simplicity of intention and, and purity of intention and purity of heart is not only applicable with knowing the things of God intellectually yeah that's one part but what our Lord is also telling us here is if we want to know what God wants from us in terms of our vocation in life in terms of where he wants to direct our life in terms of what he wants us to do every day just every day what is the will of God for us today for me today what is the will of God for me at this moment all of these things require the simplicity the innocence of a child okay? that's what our Lord is telling us here okay? everything that God wants to reveal to us from the big things of faith and morality and all that to the everyday application of his will to the everyday revelation of his will for us that day requires from us simplicity a childlike innocence okay? because that's the only way we will understand what God wants that's the only way we will be disposed to understand and to live by what God wants from us every day now, what's the secret to acquiring that kind of simplicity, that kind of childlike innocence? What's the secret? Might anyone guess? <coughs> How do you do that? Uh, Joe? Huh? Obedience. obedience, yes, that's right. Obedience is, is, is a good way to do it. But there is one... There's one that, that, uh, that supersedes everything else in this case. What is that? Humility. humility is, of course, important, Sophia. They all come together, humility, obedience. But there's something else that, that we need to clean. There's something that we need to purify. There's something that we need to keep innocent so that we can be open to understanding the things of God and the will of God every day. <clears throat> What is that? What has tainted our innocence? Maybe that's a better way of putting it. What is it that has tainted our innocence that caused the blurriness of our mind and our heart so that now it's so hard to understand and penetrate the things of God? Huh? Sin, Sophia. Sin. Huh? Yeah. So sin has tainted our innocence. Right? That's what, that's what smeared the innocence of Adam and Eve to begin with. And that's what we inherited through original sin. Right? So we have that tendency of being sinful. And that's what we have to try to 
fight against. That's what we have to try every day to rid ourselves of. Right? Because that is what taints our vision. That is what smudges our uh, uh, understanding of things of God. That is what that is what um, uh, 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 puts earplugs on our soul that we cannot anymore hear and understand the will of God for us at every moment of the day. That is what puts uh, uh, those plugs in our ears that we don't anymore take into account the things our parents tell us. See, we become blind and deaf to the things our parents tell us. And therefore, our parents don't become any more instruments for us to know the will of God at every moment of the day. See, we become deaf to the suggestions of God who, who puts, uh, who arranges our life in such a way that he can communicate his will to us every day. See, those are the effects of sin. And so thankfully, we have confession, which we just did yesterday right and which we try to do every week and which i recommend to everybody you know confession 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 not directly to god but confession to a priest because that was the mechanism that our lord had uh, instituted on earth so that we can acquire forgiveness from our sins and recover for ourselves that that level of innocence and purity uh, that that uh, is required for us to understand the will of god Right? So sin, 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 sin. Let's get rid of that. Let's try to avoid that as much as possible. Sin is the enemy of childlike innocence and purity. So let us keep that in mind. And, and all the time that we have that opportunity to go to confession, let's make a very, very sincere uh, confession, a sincere act of penance, a sincere purpose of amendment so that we can straighten up our lives. And live with childlike innocence, with childlike purity of heart, of mind, of intentions. Then we can understand God. Then we can understand the will of God for us every day. Okay? So today, maybe at Mass, as we go to Mass this morning, we can ask our Lord that grace, that grace of innocence, that grace to be able to acquire childlike characteristics for our soul so that we can be closer to him and understand him more and understand his will for us every moment of the day okay hey Ava ah, look at that smile Ava very good okay have a good day everybody see you tomorrow hopefully bye bye